Dear students, greetings for the day. Today we will study about disaster management in aviation. If the prevention of accidents or incidents fails and some critical event still occurs, then the disaster management team of the organization must try to limit the damage done to stakeholders, property, the environment, and the organization itself by responding to the critical situation. The initial investigation reports might be vague till the facts are uncovered completely. The crisis management team needs to get the correct report and take intelligent as well as immediate actions to handle the disaster. If the loss is not handled appropriately, the media accuses the organization for being irresponsible. After handling the initial phase with immediate action, the organization then enters into the resuming or restoring phase. It rebuilds its own reputation, refines the public perception, and recovers the loss over property. Accidents and incidents happen around the airports or while the aircraft is in transit. There can be numerous reasons such as runway incursion or excursion, bad weather, failure of a functional system component, loss of ground communication, and a lot more. The authorities conduct investigation according to the international standards by visiting the site and collecting vital information from the site as well as by retrieving the black box of the aircraft. The sole purpose of the investigation is to find out the cause and to avoid repetition of similar incident or accident in future. An NGO named Aircraft Crashes Record Office at Geneva compiles statistics on aviation accidents. The International Civil Aviation Organization is primarily focused on preventing accidents. As such there are various organizations from each country to investigate aviation-related accidents. In India, the Directorate General of Civil Aviation investigated incidents until May 30, 2012. Since then, the Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau has taken over the investigation responsibilities. In USA, National Transportation Safety Board officials gather the evidence from the crash site and assess the cause. The organization also investigates incidents involving U.S. registered aircraft, in collaboration with local investigation authorities when there is a significant loss of American asset. Aviation law is one of the specialty field in studies of law. Air law is a general viewpoint that covers the special characteristics and demands of aviation field. There is no governing body with the right to frame the air laws governing all states in the legal sense or there is not any international law. But the phrase air law is used to describe a system of implicit and explicit agreements that the nations together these agreements are known as conventions. There are numerous conventions such as Chicago, Rome, Tokyo, Geneva, and few more. Let us discuss more about the aviation law. It is a branch of law that is concerned with air transport operations, and all the associated legal and business concerns. This is a series of rules that governs the use of airspace for aviation, and its benefits for the general public and the nations of the world. A Convention on International Civil Aviation was signed at Chicago on 7th of December, 1944. It established specific principles in order to develop international civil aviation in a safe and orderly manner. It also ensures that international air transport services are established on the basis of fair opportunity for participating countries.
the convention formed the International Civil Aviation Organization, the Canada-based agency of the United Nations. It sets the principles of international air navigation and works to middle dot ensure a well-ordered growth of international civil aviation throughout the world. Middle dot encourage aircraft design and operation for peaceful and constructive purposes. Middle dot promote the development of airways, airports, and air navigation facilities for international civil aviation. Middle dot meet the safety, regularity, efficiency, and the economical air transport needs of the people around the world. Middle dot prevent unplanned economic decisions. Sovereignty. It is the right of a state to impose its national law on users of its airspace. Territory. It is the airspace over and within the territorial borders of a state. Territorial airspace has no vertical limit. For the states with sea boundaries, territorial airspace extends beyond the land. This limit is internationally agreed limit of the territorial waters. Public international law, it refers to the process which binds the states and international organizations to agreements with respect to their aviation activities. The activities may be among various problems of political, technical, economical, financial, social or legal nature. For example, the Chicago Convention, the Geneva Convention, and some international conventions. Private international law, it is the series of rules pertaining to the relations between private persons involved in the operation and the use of aircraft. It applies to the travelers and airline staff. For example, the Tokyo Convention frames the prohibition of unlawful acts committed on the aircraft. Supranational law, it is a law that a higher body can impose with legal force on one or more states. For example, EU air laws. The IR2 Operational Safety Audit is an internationally recognized and accepted system that audits and certifies operational management and control systems in the airlines. IR2 formed this certifying evaluation body in 2003. It conducts airline audits according to the aviation laws consistently. The airlines which have no certification probably either failed in the auditing or they did not participate in auditing at all. Carrying out audit makes an airline more reliable but the cost of audit is high. Mostly only international airlines participate in the audit as they can bear the cost of audit and implement the changes suggested. The crash rate, which is measured per specific number of flights, is three times less in the airlines which took IOSA audit than the ones which did not. The Assembly of Representatives from the Contracting States, a council of governing bodies out of various subordinate bodies, and a secretariat. The chief officers are the President of the Council and the Secretary General. ICAO conducts meeting every three years to discuss about the work and to set future policies. There are five different freedoms of the air. The first two are technical freedoms followed by three commercial freedoms. First freedom, the right of aircraft from state A to overfly state B without landing. Second freedom, the right of aircraft from state A to land in state B for technical reasons.
Third freedom, the right of aircraft from state A to accept paying traffic from state to and put it down in state B. Fourth freedom, the right of aircraft from state A to pick up paying traffic in state B and put it down in state A. Fifth freedom, the right of aircraft from state A to take paying traffic from state B to state C. Any public transport relies on planetary resources, which are finite. Aviation cannot assume a long-term sustainability as it also relies on those finite resources such as fuel. Latest technology is aiding today's inverted exclamation mark Macron S aircrafts to fly efficiently over long distances. The demand of air transport around the world is increasing because of the improvement in the lifestyle. In the bargain, the society and the nature needs to pay the price, accept some drawbacks such as noise, pollution, and use of resources. Aircraft engines operate by combusting fuel to a great extent. Due to the emission produced by fuel combustion, the quality of air around few kilometers of the airport gets affected significantly. It is about 3 kilometers up at the time of departure and 6 kilometers down at the time of landing the air quality is hampered. In addition, the baggage and food carts moving on the taxiway produce smoke if not maintained well. Climate change is the alteration in average weather conditions that a given region undergoes. It involves consideration of various factors such as temperature, storm frequency, winds, and rains. Aircrafts emit greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide. They also emit water vapor, which traps chemically active gases that change the natural greenhouse gases ozone. O3, and methane, CH4. The aviation field involves a network of aircraft manufacturers, airline businesses, airport management, government, travel agents, bank partners, and insurance companies. State-of-the-art automation and ever-improving technology aids smooth aviation operations. There are new aircrafts with high fuel efficiency and other devices coming up to aid airline management and airport management. The customer expectations have increased. Since airlines and airports provide experience as an intangible product, they need to be always tuned with upcoming market changes and maintain customer loyalty towards themselves. Upgrading the aircrafts, the hard product, is still a challenge because of the expenses for purchasing them. The paybacks can be extremely positive or negative down the future timeline. Today most of the airlines are focusing on maintaining their aircrafts and enhancing the customer experience right from booking their tickets up to their arrival at the destination. Airlines are focusing also on the cost controls through refining organizational structure, model of operations, and work practices. The low-cost carrier's growth rates continues to be above average in the aviation industry. But there are challenges to face such as customer expectations, especially in full-service airline markets. Most of the regional airlines prefer to lease the aircrafts and support system to the international airlines, 